All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk about our last lecture of December. And you got a test coming up, but this is going to be the last time you hear my voice until January. And we're going to talk about the last of the gas lectures. And I'll put down lectures here for you guys. Let me change my tablet. Gas lectures. Yay! All right, so what we're going to look at is that we're going to look at various different things that, we're going to, that gases can affect and how we deal with them. And first is going to be partial pressure. So when we look at pressure of a single gas, this pressure reading is of just, of just that compound. So if we have a, a container of oxygen, just oxygen, we're going to measure oxygen. But we have so we've got two or more gas compounds in the mixture and in a container, and we read the pressure, that pressure reading is the sum of the the pressure of each gas. So if you think about all of our simulations, we've got, we may have H2 gas coming in and got O2 gas coming in and they're going to hit the wall, one's going to hit faster than the other, but the total pressure that we're going to see is actually a, the percent composition of the gaseous mixture. So it's 50-50, half the pressure is due by hydrogen, the other half is due by oxygen. This is what we mean by pre pressure readings to some of the pressures. So we got pressure total is equal P oxygen plus pressure of hydrogen. Hydrogen may be going faster than oxygen, but oxygen has more momentum at the velocity. So we're talking about, remember, we're talking about when we're talking about atoms hitting a side, we're talking about the force it hits. And so we're talking about pressure being the number of collisions, also how how much energy those collisions have. And so when we talk about the pressure readings, we're just talking about the sum, and this is what we have. It's pressure total is equal P1 plus P2 plus P3, and how many number of gases we have in the mixture. Air has quite a lot of components, up to 15, depending upon how polluted it is. Pure air has at least four. Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and maybe a little xenon. So that so you get the idea of how this works. Also if you think about it, pressure total, uh, P1, uh, say let's look at P1, is also equal to Px, pressure total, times the mole fraction of 1. So if we know the mole fraction, or the percent composition of, say, air, it's 74% nitrogen, so 74, so 0 0.74 atmospheres is the, is the uh, pressure of nitrogen in air. 21% <clears throat> is going to be oxygen. 0.21 atmospheres is oxygen. So you get the idea how this works. And when you add the two up, you're going to get this pressure total. And now, next is diffusion. This is Graham's law. Diffusion and effusion. There's a difference between the two. Now, diffusion is the process, as you see here, the molecule moving from high concentration to low concentration. So if somebody opens up a little bit of sour milk in one end of the kitchen, it's going to take some time for that smell to get to the other side. You may want to say Limburger tree. So what happens is that we have, we're going to have some molecules here, and we produce it here, and they're going to go this way, some goes that way, some goes that way, and what they're going to do is go back and forth in a motion like this, And it's going to take time to go from one end of the room to the other. And this is just their average velocity. And it's just diffusion. It's going from high concentration to low concentration. So we have dark blue here in this box. And in this box, it's nothing. When we join the two boxes together and let the gases mingle, it's just going to be overall a lighter shade of blue. This is diffusion. You guys can see it in liquids. When you put a little bit of dye into water, it's going to spread out. You can do this in food coloring. Get a little, get liquid food coloring, put a little drop in water, and see it diffuse through the water. This is still the same as gases. And we call it diffusion. And it's actually true for any liquid, high concentration, low concentration. And what they want to do is make sure the concentration is even throughout the, throughout the container. Now, effusion is the process of a gas escaping from a container. 
Now, if you have a balloon, if we look at a piece of the skin of the balloon fabric, this pours. Small microscopic holes in the in, in the balloon rubber. And what happens is that if we look from the side view, as we have helium, all, the, all these molecules of helium in here, and this is air, and helium is going to try and get through this membrane, and it will, through because the holes are just a big, a big enough size for the helium to go through. And now it's going to bounce all the way around inside the balloon, but then it eventually it's escaped. This is why I call it fusion, the escaping. The gas escaping from a container through the pores. A uh, pore is a very, very small, tiny hole. Now, if I were to gash this with a knife, whoops, gash this with a knife, that is not a fusion anymore. It's going to escape because the pressure is going to be too big. The pressure's got to be constant throughout, and it's just the mo gas molecules leaving the uh, the container. And so this is what those two processes are, diffusion and diffusion. Now, we're going to come with rate. And when we think of rate, we're thinking about speed or velocity of a molecule, the rate, how fast it's going, how far per meter, how, you know, how, you know, how fast something's going, it's basically velocity of the molecule, so, you know, something divided by time, distance divided by time. But we also consider rate in chemistry In chemistry, folks, rate is the amount of a compound being consumed per unit of time or being lost by, by unit of time. So it's molarity over time, or I should say moles per liter per second, is, 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 constant, is, is the rate. Or molality per second is also rate. Now remember, big M is moles of solute per liter, and while little m is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. But divide this by time, it, the, these two concentrations units by time, you're going to get the rate that it's being consumed, or sometimes if you think about it, being created. And so Graham's equation said that the rate is inversely proportional to mass, or rate is equal to 1 over mass. So you take the rate times the mass, the square root of the mass, excuse me, is equal to this constant. And this is a general constant that's equal to whatever experiment, unique for each experiment. And I don't know how to spell. There we go. And so what we could do is you have two if we have one experiment with two different gases, the rate of one over the rate of two is equal to the square root of the mass of two over the square root of the mass of one. You're going to be using this equation on the test. Get to know it. All right. I'll have another video with all with example problem how to run do the example problems and. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice day.